What's the word, y'all? A lot of stuff happened in the NBA today. We have big comebacks, turmoil in the locker room, OG Ananobi, broken jump shots, and I'm here to talk about it all. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new. Let's get to the recap. But let's first talk about my presenting sponsor, which is Prize Picks. They've been supporting the channel for the entirety of the 2021-22 season. Hit that link in the description and use code Kenny because you're matching up to a $100 deposit for every new customer. If you don't know what it is, it is you versus the numbers. So far, since the beginning of the season, your boy is up about $350. I ain't trying to flex it, nothing. But we've been really hitting our things. And I even told my girlfriend, hey, I want you to put together entry. You watch enough basketball just by being around me. Let me see what you pick. And she hit on hers. Now, she picked flex, which means that since Trey Young didn't hit his over, she still had a chance to win because CJ hit his over on threes, Carl hit his over on rebounds, and Zach hit his over on points. And just like that, she was in the green. And with me winning today, I am now in second place in our prize picks pool with me and the homies. So I'll check back with y'all next week to see if I jump up to first place. But I, I do got a little bit of climb because first place is kind of killing it. So hit the link in the description. Use code Kenny because you're matching up to a $100 deposit for all new customers. The amount of people that have already hit that link on this channel has been amazing. Let's keep it up all season long. Um, the Bulls had a legendary comeback in my eyes versus the Boston Celtics. I'm going to talk about this game, but I'm not going to act like, you know, I'm not going to turn my nose down to the Boston Celtics and their fans. I am 100% super excited and happy that we ended up winning this. It was one of the better experiences as a Bulls fan from home to be down by that much at the end of a third quarter and to just bang, bang, bang and win by double digits. It was crazy. It, it's still crazy to me that people saw the DeMar DeRozan signing was like, Yep, worst, worst signing in the league. The man has been carrying us in clutch games. He has been the reason why we were like, you know, we're, clo we're close to still being undefeated right now. A lot of that is DeMar DeRozan. We were talking about the game where the Raptors almost came back. The reason we won that game is because DeMar DeRozan iced it. He has been amazing for us, especially considering that Zach Levine is dealing with the hand injury. So when Zach Levine is struggling, DeMar, it's your turn. It's your turn. But Zach Levine put the icing on the cake. He had some big time shots. Um, Ayo DeSumo, I cannot go this episode without talking about him. His energy was infectious. He was six for six from the field. Tony Bradley has been amazing in the two games that he's got to really play. And, and same thing with Darius Jones Jr. He got to close his game because his impact was so great. The comeback that we had in the end of the third quarter and in, in the fourth quarter was led by Ayo DeSumo and Derrick Jones Jr. So they both got to play big time minutes. And I love Billy Donovan for that because he didn't just go with the players that he knew. He went with the players that were hot and the players that were, were the reason for the comeback. And it was just it was just a great moment, man. But I, I do feel for you Boston Celtics fans because there's no reason for you to lose this game, especially considering how the first three quarters went. First quarter, the Bulls could have missed seven three-pointers. We hit five three-pointers total in the game against the Jazz that we won. We hit seven in the first quarter, but they weathered the storm. Jalen Brown was open so much. I don't know what our defensive rotations were in the first three quarters of the game, but even when he wasn't open, he was creating for himself and getting shots that looked good for him. Jason Tatum had a couple big shots in this one. Um, um, Al Horford was all over the place, and it just felt like the game was over in that third quarter. Something happened. Something switched. And the intensity that they had played, played with it for the three quarters. Because at one point in the second quarter, they were down by double digits. And they quickly brought it back. They were playing with intensity. The crowd was in it. And something switched. And everything fell apart. And what I saw in that fourth quarter. Now, there's a lot of stuff being said from Marcus Smart. We're going to get to his comments. What I saw, because I watched that game as a fan. And then after it was over, I re-watched it to try to talk about it. Because how the heck... That they go up from go from up 19 to losing by 14 in a quarter. And what I saw as far as on the court, Jalen Brown was the best player on the court for two and a half quarters. The fourth quarter came around and he was relegated to sitting in the corner. They gave it to Jason Tatum. And he wasn't the guy tonight. He was not the guy tonight. Jalen was. And this is not the first time I've said something like this about the Boston Celtics. I understand at this point it is Jason's team. But if he ain't on and the other dude is, give it. There's two all-stars here. The Bulls are Zach Levine's team. But when Zach Levine's not on, DeMar DeRose is like, hey, I got us. And he ended with 37. They don't be doing the hot hand thing. 
it is a lot of standing around too and like hey jason do something do something please jason but they don't do the hot hand thing and i think that might have been the downfall of a lot of this and there were a lot of comments that came out about it and let me read you some of them now this is from marcus smart I just like to play basketball. Every team knows we're trying to go to Jason and Jalen. Every team is programmed and studied to stop Jason and Jalen. I think everybody's scout report is to make those dudes pass the ball. They don't want to pass the ball. And when I saw that, I was like, yo, that is a super bold statement. That is crazy. The next one says, that's something we're going to learn. They're still learning. We're proud of the progress they're making, and they're going to have to make another leap and find a way to create not only for themselves, but create for others on the team to open up the court for them. And then it was also talking about how he was like, I can't do much if I'm just sitting in the corner and yada yada. And I think, first of all, I don't like the fact that he went to the press to say this. Seems like something that could have been said behind closed doors, but how? Do, what do I know? He might have said it a million times. The Celtics have been bad dating back to the last couple months of last season. They have not been good. Right, So these could be words that he's mentioned to Brad when Brad was a coach, to Brad when he took the front office job, to Ime Udoka, to Jason and Jalen themselves. These are words that he could have said, and he's like, okay, I got no other resort but to talk to the people. I don't really know. But when you actually listen and watch the post-game interview, it's not as it's not as a bad of a quote as it sounds like when you're saying it aloud. Because when you say it out loud, it's like, bro, they some ball hogs. And what he's really saying is, yeah, yeah, they ball hogging, but they're still growing as players, right? He, like, he's saying it as a teammate. You know what I'm saying? And the, what makes this worse is that the solution for this team is not simply let Jalen take the shots when he needs it. That's not the solution. Like, when I said, when I was talking about that earlier, that's not the only solution to this team being bad or to them being better. There, there are fundamental mistakes with this roster. And what makes it even worse is, there's not a lot that they could do to fix those mistakes. They extended Robert Williams. If I'm not mistaken, that means he cannot be traded. They extended Marcus Smart, which means that he cannot be traded. So if his teammates, Jason and Jalen, hate what he just said, br brother's kind of sick. Now, I could be mistaken here, because I'm, but I'm kind of thinking about when Malcolm Brogdon signed his extension right before the season started, people were saying that that made him untradeable. Maybe these guys are tradable. I'm just going off that. Which basically means, oh, Al Horford's not tradable. And Al Horford's not the reason for this. Al Horford played an amazing game today. Um, I test told me that. That line says he had a dub in 10. So, I'm um, good. So, that re that leaves you, are you going to trade Jalen or Jason? And I don't think that's going to happen. It could. It would shake up the league and I'd be excited about it. But I don't think that's going to happen. What is Brad Stevens going to do? You know, Kemba Walker kept his mouth closed for an entire season or two. But reports are starting to come out. I, I actually like one thing about um, um, things, in, not just sports, but things in general. Once somebody is down, that's when all the other reports come out. So after this game and after Marcus Smart's um, comments, I saw an article pop up on my timeline talking about Kimba Walker and how he hated being in that locker room or how he hated that the fans booed the team or how Blake Griffin had called some people on the team when um, when he got waived or whatever it was with the Detroit Pistons. He called some people like, yo, what's the word? What's the vibe like? And the, whoever he talked to was like, no, go anywhere but here. There's tur turmoil in this organization and in this locker room. And we haven't been able to visually see it. They've been keeping it tucked under, but it's starting to show his head. On paper, this is a team that should be better than what they are right now. But they're bad. They are bad. And, and I can't really say much else about that. Jason Tatum, as much as I love him, I see fans turning on Jason Tatum right now. Because because <laughs> people are, are saying he's like a young mellow. Um, in a sense that he does not pass, like his assist percentage is lowest of anybody at his usage rates, similar to what Melo was in Melo's young years. Not the best parallel. You know what I'm saying? Because if Jason's not hitting the shots, he's not playmaking for anybody else. And that being said, there's nobody on this team that's really playmaking for anybody else. Marcus Smart's like, hey, I don't want to just sit in the corner. You, had, you, you took 11 shots and you ain't had no assist today, bro. You know what I'm saying? There are fundamental mistakes with this team. Um, that they they saw Dennis Schroeder out there for the low, and it was like, yes, that'll please our fans. Yeah, we got a dude that was offered eighty million, and yeah, he ain't take the eighty million. Oh, I guess the eighty million wasn't really on the table, according to Dennis. And that's gonna be good. We we mm, there he is. There there it is. That's our guy. It's bad. They have two of the best young wings in the entire league. 
and they haven't been able to they haven't been able to figure out how to have them play together successfully at their peaks because you can say a couple years ago they were in the conference finals but they were like what seven years old each or something let's talk about damian lillard he is slumping still today 35% from the field, 7 for 20 from the, from the field, only 22% from three. He ended up with a double-double with 20 points and 10 assists, but they lost to a 76er team that didn't have Joel, Tobias Harris, or Ben Simmons. They lost the game, and it wasn't really close. I know it says 10-point game, and they tried to have some fight in the last couple minutes. Nah, it wasn't that close. Um, What's going on with Dame? Dame was his name. Top 75 players of all time, and through the first six or seven games, he's shooting like 20% from three, 30% from the field, and has got people a little bit worried. Um, And you know what? I would say I would be worried. There, there's parts of me that is worried. Let, let me explain. Damian Lillard is no, this is not the first time Damian Lillard has ever slumped in his career. He has slumped, I believe, every single season to some capacity around five to six games. The only difference is those slumps don't come at the beginning of the season. It would happen in December. It will happen in February. You know, it will happen throughout the season where there's not that many eyes. The first week or two of the NBA season, everybody is watching. And they've been on national TV a few times. You know what I'm saying? So everybody's paying attention to the fact that Damian Lillard is slumping. But in reality, he does this kind of often. It doesn't last long. It's usually a five, six game slump. But it just so happened this is the first. Now, I am trying to figure out for myself, is it just a slump? Or is Dame still injured? Do you remember the Olympics? Damian Lillard hurt his ribs? I'm pretty sure he hurt his ribs. And he played through it because it's for the gold medal for the country. You know what I'm saying? But let me remind you of what Damian Lillard's statistics look like when he was playing overseas in the Olympics. He was teammate of the year. That's kind of dope. Shout out to Dame. In the six games, he shot 38% from the field and about 35% from three. Right now this season, he is shooting 35% from the field and 23% from three. The numbers, kind of similar other than that 10% decrease from three-pointers. So if he is just slumping, I don't worry about Damian Lillard at all. He is Dame. You know what I'm saying? He's still one of the best point guards in the league. But if he is fighting through an injury and just re refuses to tell anybody, that's when I'm a little bit worried. I don't like that about players, bro. I understand you want to be tough and you don't want to be a person to tell the world that you injured because now you look at as weak. But as a fan, if my star player is, is playing through injury, I want to know those type of things. If Zach Levine just showed up one day with the tape around his thumb, fans would be like, what the heck is going on with Zach? I'm happy that we know that he has a torn ligament. How does that kind of changes your perspective of the way he's playing? If Zach shoots one for 12, I'm like, that thumb must be hurting him. If Dame has a <laughs> broken rib or whatever it was, I'm like, okay. That's why he's shooting that bad, and we got to figure out what the next steps are. Let a, let, let a brother know. I, you remember LeBron? I know I'm rambling. When LeBron lost in the finals, all of a sudden, he on the podium with a cast on his hand. Yeah, I've been playing with a broken. Come on, bro. You you didn't think that was good enough information to tell people? Until the end. Until the end. Imagine if Dame came at the end of the season of like, yeah, I shot 25% from three this year because I was playing with two broken ribs. What would the fans say? We'd be like, dang, bro, you tough. But you should have got that checked out. <laughs> We'd rather you get that checked out. Um, so, yeah, they lost a game that they should have won. Even with Dame slumping, they should have won this game. If there's any silver lining, if there's any silver lining, um, Anthony Simons, Larry Nance, Tony Snell, and Nazir Little looked decent. Anthony Simons actually looked really good the entire season. But their bench unit, not that bad. So if Dame starts to hit his shots, CJ wasn't particularly good today either. You know, if their top two players start to hit their shots and you have one of the best benches they've ever orchestrated around Dame, this team will be right back into being a playoff team. They're even three and they're three and four right now with Dame playing the worst basketball of his career. Philly, though. We'll see you soon in Chicago. Or are we seeing you there? I don't know which. We play each other twice. One's at Chicago, one's y'all. We'll see y'all. Andre Drummond looking, looking kind of elite as the new starting center of that team, wasn't he? Shout out to him. That's it, though. Um... That was a big ramble, but all of these videos are.